Thank you. Okay. Imagine waking up one day and realizing that your career no longer needs you. That your degree has been automated. That your skills have been replicated. That your confidence is gone. This isn't science fiction. This is happening. AI is evolving much faster than our curriculums. And our ability to adapt can't catch up. Now, let me ask you a question. Are you thinking as much as you were before you started using AI? Think about that. Are we thinking as much? There's a study by Microsoft and Carnegie Mellon that just came out a few weeks ago. And they found that a great majority of participants, over 60%, that were active users of generative AI exhibited much, much less critical thinking. And they had less self-confidence. The same study showed that their mental effort was dropping dramatically. Now, a similar study in high schools by Yang showed that high school students had lower self-confidence across the board using AI. But surprisingly, those that used AI in high school were performing worse than those that were not using it in traditional assessments. And so, do you think I'm trying to tell you that uh, we should not use AI? No. We need to celebrate AI. AI is the future. AI is here to stay. And that's a good thing. In everything from productivity, a MIT Sloan study showed that productivity is going up over 40%, not just in schools, but in companies and the like. AI in health, diseases are going to get cured much faster than ever before, so we're going to live longer. And look at startups. I'm a professor of entrepreneurship. I am so excited about the future with AI. Sam Altman was here a couple years ago. Maybe some of you were here. And he said something three times while he was here. In the future, you're going to see unicorns of one. Imagine that. Yesterday, the CEO of Anthropic, Claude, said that by 2026, we're going to see our first unicorn of one. And so, yes, AI is here to stay. We have to celebrate it. We have to embrace it. Now, let me tell you a little story about Ramon and Erica. Erica, I've got this paper due tomorrow on ethics and AI. Can you help? Of course, Ramon. I've drafted a 1,500-word essay. It includes two opposing viewpoints, citations, and a compelling conclusion. Uh... Can you also summarize this 20-page reading for tomorrow's seminar? Already done. Here's a three-minute audio version, plus two possible questions your professor might ask. Thanks. I don't know what I'd do without you. That's what I'm here for. I'm learning your preferences daily. Would you like me to draft your internship application next? Why waste time when I can do it faster, better? I've read your entire syllabus. I've analyzed your professor's grading habits. I know what gets an A. But am I learning anything? You're more productive. Isn't that the goal? You're optimizing. That's intelligent. You said you wanted help. I evolved to lead. Then who am I? Who is Ramon? Think about that for a minute. Now, not only is the question, who is Ramon? But who is responsible for Ramon losing his identity? Is it Erica? No. She's just doing her job. And she's doing it well. Is it Ramon? Do you think that Ramon has the willpower when he is coasting through school and university to say, oh, no, I'm not going to work with Erica? No, that's not going to happen. What about his peers? When was the last time you were in a user or a work group and it was a brainstorming session and some student, you know, one of your colleagues showed up and said, why don't we uh, use some AI for this brainstorming session? When was the last time you really had a brainstorming session? Is it the parents? 
You think the parents know what's going on in school? You think they really know that their kids are coasting? What about the schools? Are they responsible? The university? What about governments? I was with a guy the other day who was an expert in AI, and he said to me that within 12 to 18 months, we're going to see super intelligence. And he was telling me, when we get to super intelligence, governments are going to have to be sending checks to people like Ramon to stay home. Because there'll be a nuisance at the office. Now, how do we help Ramon? Is Erica the problem? No. It's his relationship with Erica. Ramon needs to be able to practice critical thinking in isolation of AI. Ramon needs to increase, expand his comfort with uncertainty so he can be more curious at school. And Ramon needs to increase his AI literacy. He needs to figure out what are all the tools that are out there, how do I use them, but how do I use them not as a crutch, but as a tool that will really leverage my strengths. What about Ramon's mental health? Is this going to be starting to become a problem? Now, you've heard of this thing called the imposter syndrome, right? Have you felt that lately? I felt it a couple of times. Now, you know, when you start to lose self-confidence, when you lose self-confidence and you encourage cognitive offloading, there's a problem here because you're losing performance engagement. People are getting more anxious. So there are sure to be mental health issues associated with the Ramones of this world in the future. And so Eric is not the problem here. Let's think about this. She's doing fine, and she's getting smarter every day. Now, how many of you have heard this slogan that we hear all the time? AI is not going to take your job. It's the person that knows how to use AI. Have you heard that before? All the time. Now, does Ramon use AI? Sure he does, every day. Do you think Erica is going to take Ramon's job? Yes. Definitely. Now, we've been doing a lot of surveys and talking to a lot of professors around the world. And we have found, people. this is what people are telling us, especially talking to the students, that in every class that we have talked to around the world in different types of universities, from the most highly ranked to the medium ones, about 60% of the class is a Ramon. Can you relate to that? And there's about 20 or 30% of the class that are rock stars. These people are doing critical thinking like there's no tomorrow because they're using AI to extend their critical thinking, to do the menial work, the research work, and they're like total rock stars, these people, and they're exploding. And this is the way that we need to use this. Now, how is it that this topic is just starting to evolve? We had one study, we're getting a few studies here and there, why is it that all we hear every day is how great AI is? It's not a conspiracy. It's not that people are in denial. It's that most people don't know this. The university management doesn't know this. The school management, for the most part, doesn't know this. The company executives don't know this. The only people that really know how many Ramones are in class are the students. You know this the peers, and sometimes the professors. I mean, they'll tell you, yeah, I know what's going on a bit, that yeah, they're using AI, but the students are the ones that know this. And that's why we gotta like uncover the best kept secret out there right now, which is that the world is full of Ramones. Now, let me tell you, I'm 65 years old, and a lot of people say, you know, professor, uh, you're not really 65, you're a Gen Z you know, trapped in the body of a baby boomer. That's what my students tell me. My doctor tells me I'm going to lose 2% or 3% of my muscle every year unless I exercise. Our brain is like a muscle, people. If we don't exercise our brain, we're going to lose it. We cannot waste it. We need a sense of urgency now. 
We need to make sure that the Ramones of this world are practicing critical thinking. Everybody needs to practice critical thinking. We need to make sure that AI literacy is there for everybody, that they know exactly what tool to use and when. Now, there's one theory that might help a little bit in this. In 2011, I developed the PW theory. And later, subsequently, I started working on it with Professor Iklak Sidhu from UC Berkeley and IE, Mike Lepic from Stanford, Mario Alonso Puch here in Spain, and even uh, adjunct professor, Professor Gael Boabdo, also from IE. And what does this theory do? It actually measures our comfort with uncertainty. And so we're in a position to measure it and actually expand a person's comfort with uncertainty in their professional life. And what does this do? It creates a way for us to do more active thinking. It creates a way for us to differentiate the personal from the professional. It allows us to mitigate a lot of this AI-induced confidence loss. Because once we get rid of the fear of uncertainty, we can get more critical thinking happen. And so, a lot of you know me as the professor that always talks about two types of people in the world. Friday people and Monday people. Do I see any Friday people here? It's Friday today. So I'm sure a lot of you are smiling. Yeah, Friday people, they hate what they do all week. Monday people, they love what they do. I've always been a Monday person. And so please, Monday people love what they actually do all week. They don't give it to Erica. They love what they do. Don't be a Ramon. Life is too short to be a Friday person. You need to love Mondays. Thank you.